What are you going to accomplish in 2022? You're a voice actor. You're an entrepreneur. You're a VOpreneur. Welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. Having your voiceover demos easily playable and downloadable on your website is essential. The Voice Sam Player lets you do that across any device and browser. There are also options for adding play buttons in your email signature, tracking your listens, and even putting videos in your demo player. Sign up now at voicesam.com slash markscott and receive an instant $25 credit. For full details and to claim this offer, visit voicesam.com slash markscott. The VOpreneur Podcast. Hey, it doesn't suck. Not as funny as Conan. Not as cute as Seth Meyers. Not as smart as Colbert. But he's one of us, and that counts for something. Here's Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur. Hello, and welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. I'm Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur. Really looking forward to this episode because we're going to talk about something that I am particularly passionate about, and that is goal setting. You know, it's the last episode before the end of the year, which means that hopefully this is a subject that you're already thinking about. Because we're going to be talking about goals. I want you to start thinking about what you're going to accomplish in 2022, how you're going to set priorities, and what you are going to do to make sure that when the end of the year comes, those things that you set out to do are the things that actually get done. Now, before we get into this week's episode, have you enjoyed the last year of the podcast? Are you enjoying the interview series of the podcast? Are there things that you have learned that I've really spoke to your business that have helped you to level up. I would love to know about it. If you could do me a favor, tag me in your Instagram story, share it, let me know so I can share it and let other people know. I I would love to see what you're learning. I'd love to be encouraged by it as well. You can tag me on Instagram at Mark Scott. So, I mean, it's very cliche to come up to the new year and do an episode on New Year's resolutions, although I wouldn't consider this to be an episode on New Year's resolutions. I want to set actual goals. Resolutions are things that we we think we want to do, and, and we, we set it in the moment on New Year's Eve or January 1st, and usually they involve weight loss because of all of the things that we've eaten over the holiday season, which, you know, that's probably going to be an issue for me as well. But, but I'm not talking about New Year's resolutions that we've already given up on by the third week of January. I want to set some goals for your voiceover business that we're going to carry on throughout the year. Now, maybe you know that I run mastermind groups every year. I'm doing it now. 2022 will be the fourth year that I've run mastermind groups. And part of the mastermind group process for me is spending an hour in December with each member to talk about what their goals are going to be for the coming year. If we don't know what you're trying to accomplish, how can I hold you accountable? How can I help you to get those things done? How can we make sure that you're prioritizing your time in the right way? How can we make sure that you're doing the things that need to be done in order to get you closer to those goals and not just doing busy work for the sake of being busy working? And so goal setting is a big part of what we do to get ready for the mastermind. And what I want to walk you through today, and this is just going to be a quick episode, are a few things that I do with people in my mastermind group to help them set their goals. So there's five different things that I want you to take into consideration when it comes to setting goals. And And we're not going to talk about all of the usual things like, you know, setting smart goals and stuff like that. I've covered that in previous episodes of the podcast. I'm going to come at this from a slightly different angle with five different areas that I like to dive into with people in my mastermind group to make sure that we're setting them up for success in the coming year. The first question that I like to ask, and and this one may throw you because it, it seems counterintuitive, but I love asking what is an area of your business that frustrates you? Now, that doesn't seem like something that you would want to devote a lot of attention to. It doesn't seem like something that you would be getting excited about and something that you would want to explore further. But I actually think that there's a valid reason for asking that question. What is one area of your business that frustrates you? Our frustrations are our hangups. Those are the things that cause us to procrastinate. Those are the things that stand in the way of our success. They're the barriers. They're the walls that keep us going through to the next level. When we don't know how to do something, generally we avoid it or we get so frustrated trying to do that thing that it impacts all of the other areas of our life and business because we carry that frustration and that energy through into other aspects. And so 
That's why I think that it's important that we tackle this. What is one area of your business that frustrates you? When you can determine what that one most frustrating area is, I think it's essential that you set a goal around overcoming it. So if you are not proficient in audio editing, and every time you have to sit down and edit a voiceover, it causes you massive stress because you know that you don't know what you're doing, and so you don't want to do it, or you're, maybe you're worried that your sound isn't good enough and you think maybe this is the reason why I'm not booking, or maybe it's incredibly time-consuming because you just haven't come up with an efficient way to do it yet. If that is one of the biggest areas of frustration in your business, let me tell you something. That is holding you back in so many ways that you probably don't even realize. And so that's the sort of thing that I would encourage somebody in my mastermind to tackle head on. If one area of your business that completely frustrates you is your editing, then let's get you help. Let's make sure that you can become a more proficient editor. Let's get you a coach. Let's get you a course. Let's get you some videos that you can watch. Let's you know, hook you up with somebody like Uncle Roy to, to do the two-hour editing session, whatever it is, we want to make sure that you overcome that so that it is no longer a frustration in your business, so that it's no longer a pain point that is causing you to procrastinate or causing you to avoid certain things. So really think about that one. And, and chances are you won't have to really think about it because you probably know as soon as I said it, what is one area of your business that frustrates you? I'm guessing that to a degree, there was probably an eye roll and a sigh and a, and there was the answer. You probably knew exactly what it was. How can you overcome that in 2022? Does it mean making a specific investment in your business? Does it mean adding a piece of equipment? Does it mean working with a specific coach? Does it mean taking training in a specific area? Do you have to find an accountant? Do you need to talk to an attorney to help you set up an LLC? Whatever it is, whatever that area of your business is that frustrates you, I would encourage you to face it head on. Set a goal around it and just get that thing out of the way. It's going to feel so much better to just have it done than to wake up every day and walk into the office facing the fear and the dread and the frustration of whatever that thing is. So that's the first one on the list. What is one area of your business that frustrates you? The second thing on the list, it's December 31st, 2022, and you're reflecting back on your year. What's one thing that you've accomplished that makes you feel like a success? I'm often surprised, although at this point I shouldn't be because of how many times I've done it, but there are a lot of people that just don't really know how to set goals because they've never set goals before. And, and I get that. I used to be that way. I haven't always sat down and set goals for my year. It's only something that I've been doing for I don't know, maybe the last 10 years. When you don't know how to set goals, sometimes you're not sure what goals you want to set. And so one of the ways that I get people to think about it is by asking them that question. It's December 31st, 2022, and you're reflecting back on your year. What's something that you've accomplished that makes you feel like a success? That could be a lot of different things. I can tell you right now, for me, it's going to be booking that first documentary narration. If I come to the end of the year in 2022 and I have not booked a documentary narration with this brand new demo that I worked with Tom Pinto coaching on for a year that Uncle Roy produced for me that was nominated for a Voice Arts Award, if I've done all of that, if I've invested all that time, invested all that money, poured all that passion into that demo, if I come to the end of the year, December 31st, 2022, and I haven't booked that first documentary, I'm going to feel like a total failure no matter what else I accomplish in my business. So that, for me, is the one thing. That doesn't mean it's the only goal, but that's the one goal. Next year, 2022, is going to be all about booking that first documentary. So I want you to think about that same thing for yourself. Maybe you need to get a specific demo done. Maybe there's a specific coach that you want to work with. Maybe there's a specific genre that you want to pursue. Maybe you've been going after a certain client for a while now and haven't been able to get there, and now you're ready to get there. Maybe it's hitting a certain income level. Maybe it's going from part-time to full-time, like Brandon Miller and I talked about in a recent episode of the podcast. Whatever it is, spend some time reflecting on that. It's December 31st, 2022, and you're reflecting back on your year. What's something you accomplished that makes you feel like a success? Put yourself a year forward 
figure out what that feeling is, what that thing is, and now you're going to set a goal or perhaps goals to work at throughout the year that's going to bring you closer to it. I know that if I'm going to get that documentary, if I'm going to book that first documentary, then a big part of my goal for the year is going to be devoting marketing efforts to the documentary and and show narration space, to finding those leads and reaching out to those leads and building those relationships because that's the one thing that I know that I can do that's going to bring me closer to that goal at the end of the year. If I see a training opportunity, perhaps, maybe through Anganguza's VO Peeps or possibly through Gravy for the Brain or maybe through the Global Voice Acting Academy, maybe it's through Brent Hagel's Trailer Voices, If, if I find an opportunity to take training specifically in the genre of documentary or in-show narration, maybe it's even an opportunity to read for a certain coach or a certain casting director or something like that, that would be something that I would be on the lookout for because I know that that is something that I can do that is going to help me to get to that goal by the end of the year next year of booking that first narration. So think about what that thing is and then map out some goals that's going to bring you closer to it. Here's another one because on one hand, there are people who have never set goals before, and so they're not really sure how to do it. On the flip side of that, there are people who set too many goals. And setting too many goals can sometimes be just as bad as not setting any goals because if you've got too many things going on, you're pulling yourself in too many different directions, you're probably not getting a whole lot of any of them accomplished because you're spreading yourself too thin, right? There's still only so many hours in the day that we have to give to our business. There's only so much that we can do. There's only so many areas of expertise we can develop. There's only so many skills that we all have. And so one of the things that I have done with mastermind members in the past that has proven to be really, really effective, after you've set all these goals for yourself, rank them numerically. Force yourself to go through that exercise of ranking them numerically. This is my number one goal. This is my number two goal. And what I have found in the past is that, generally speaking, getting that maybe first two or three, is pretty easy because we know the ones that we really, really want to accomplish. The further down the list, those are sometimes goals that we're just adding for the sake of having goals. Or, you know, maybe they're just like, well, it'd be nice, but I don't really care, right? But you don't think about that until you force yourself to rank them numerically. Sitting down and and going through that exercise is going to help you figure out what your priorities are. And once you have figured out what your priorities are, it now becomes so much easier to figure out where you need to focus your efforts and more specifically, what those efforts are that you need to be doing. Because now you're taking action based on priorities, priorities that have been set based on the goals that are the most important to you. So I would rather see somebody with five really strategic goals than 20 random goals. Because it's not a he or she who sets the most goals wins. That's not the way it works. I want you to come to the end of the year and have them all accomplished. That's what matters to me. And you're much more likely to accomplish a few strategic goals than you are to accomplish a whole bunch of just random goals that you've set just for the sake of it. So if you've got a lot of goals, or if you've got a lot of things that you think are priority, you know, for example, I worked on this exercise with somebody who had multiple genres of voiceover that they wanted to pursue. And they had the ability probably to pursue most of them. And they actually had demos to pursue most of them. But when I forced them to go through the exercise of ranking each one of those genres, one, two, three, four, five, so on, all of a sudden it shone a light for them on which genres mattered most. And so even though they may actually want to work in all of those spaces, we were able to figure out what the top spaces were, what the priority spaces were. And then we were able to devote effort accordingly. We were able to prioritize accordingly. So make yourself go through that exercise, writing down all of the things that you think that you want to accomplish, and then ranking them numerically. I don't know about you, but for me, one of the goals that I always set for myself is a financial goal. There's a certain number that I want to try to hit by the end of the year, and I use that number as a motivator. I use that number to hold me accountable. I use that number as a measuring stick to figure out whether or not I'm doing the things that I want to do. My guess is that even if you haven't set the number yet, you want to make more money in 2022 than you made in 2021. One of the ways that that is going to happen is by learning how to direct market. You need to learn how to get out there and find your own leads 
build your own client base, and become the consistently working voice actor that you want to be. You can't rely exclusively on casting sites and agents for those things. They can be a tool in the toolbox, but they can't be the only tool in the toolbox. You're going to have to learn how to do things like email marketing, in-person networking, social media marketing, taking advantage of all of these different tools that are out there to get out there and find your own clients. Put those people on your list so that you've got repeat business always coming through the door. That is what VoiceOver Marketing Playbook can teach you how to do. It's what VoiceOver Marketing Playbook will teach you how to do. Playbook is going to be available again January 5th through the 14th, 2022. If your goal is to level up in the new year, if your goal is to increase your income and increase your client base, this is the program that can help you do it. January 5th through the 14th, 2022. Details at voiceovermarketingplaybook.com. That's voiceovermarketingplaybook.com. Now back to our show. Every January when my mastermind group meets for the first time, Everybody has a 10-minute window, and inside of that 10-minute window, they are to tell us what their goals are for the coming year. And I always say that there's a multifold purpose to that, but first and foremost, by saying those things out loud, it makes it real. Once you've spoken it out loud to a group of people, it makes those goals become real. The other reason why I want everybody to share those goals is because the minute you speak them out loud to that group of people, that's also where the accountability starts right? Because now other people know what you're trying to accomplish. And hopefully, if they're like-minded in their desire to achieve their goals, they're going to hold you accountable to doing the things that you need to do, just like you're going to hold them accountable to doing the things that they need to do. But here's one of the things with those goals. And this is the part where I get a lot of people in the group. After they finish telling me the things that they want to accomplish, there's one more step. When are you going to accomplish it by? Because you see, a goal without a deadline is just a wish. And so the minute that you attach a deadline to it, you create a sense of urgency. I also think that the moment that a deadline is attached, it helps you to prioritize. So if I've got things that I want to get done by the end of Q1 2022, and I've got things I want to get done by the end of Q4 2022, then obviously At the beginning of the year, I need to be focusing my efforts on those things that I want to accomplish by the end of Q1. But sometimes we focus on those things for the end of Q4 because maybe we don't deep down believe that we can actually get the other things done. And so we procrastinate. I don't want you to procrastinate. I want you to prioritize. And I want you to do the thing. A goal without a deadline is a wish. So every goal that you set for yourself needs to have a deadline. Whether that deadline is, I'm going to get this done by the end of the day, I'm going to get this done by the end of the week, I'm going to get this done by the end of the month, by the end of the quarter, by the end of the year, doesn't matter, but it's got to have a deadline. A deadline makes it real. A deadline gives you something that you can hold yourself accountable to. A deadline helps you figure out, it it, it makes it measurable for you. If you know that you're going to do a certain thing by the end of the first quarter, And after the first two months of the year, you've put no effort in towards that thing. We can very easily measure what your progress is. It's zero progress, right? But if you know you have a deadline by the end of the first quarter and you've strategically broken that goal into steps that you can take in January, steps in February, steps in March, now we have accountability. We have something that's measurable. We're taking strategic, intentional action. We're doing the thing, but we're not just doing anything. We're doing the important thing, the essential thing, the prioritized thing, the strategic thing. So a goal without a deadline is a wish. Make sure that every single goal that you are setting for yourself has some sort of deadline attached to it. The final thing I want you to take into consideration is you've got to find ways to create accountability. Now, I've already talked about this a little bit in saying, you know, when you speak your goal out loud to to a certain group of people, Accountability starts at that point. Setting that deadline for yourself is a way that accountability starts. One of the things that has worked really well for me in the past, and I'm very much looking forward to doing again in 2022, is keeping a planner. I have a Clever Fox Weekly Undated Planner. Everybody always asks me which one I use. That's one. Clever Fox Weekly Undated. That's what I'm using, but it doesn't matter what you use as long as you're using something. But for me, I write those goals down in my Clever Fox. I write them down. 
And, and it gives you a couple of options. You can set your goals for the year, obviously, but then you can also set strategic goals for quarters, right? So if I know that there's a certain big goal that I'm trying to accomplish throughout the course of the year, I know that there's probably smaller chunks of that that I can accomplish within individual quarters. And so I can set goals that way. But then you also get to set, these are the things that I'm going to focus on this month. And then these are the things that I'm going to focus on this week, right? So when you get into the weekly section, I'm now setting goals for the week and prioritizing my time out so that I'm making sure that every time I'm doing something, it's getting me closer to one of those goals, right? So if I say that my goal is to book a documentary narration by the end of the year, one of my weekly goals is going to be to contact a certain number of documentary producers. So now I'm working strategically. I'm working with purpose. I'm making sure that the tasks that I'm focusing on on a day-to-day and week-to-week basis are moving me closer to that big goal that I've set for myself for the end of the year. And I'm the type of guy that I can't keep that straight in my head, so I need something physical that I can look at. And so the planner really works well for me. Maybe that's going to be one of the things that you're going to implement. Obviously, within my mastermind group, accountability comes from each other. When you are having your time to speak in each one of the meetings and you're recapping the things that you've done this month based on the goals that you've set for yourself, nobody wants to be the only one that shows up to the meeting that didn't accomplish any of their goals that they set out for themselves. It creates accountability. And some people may say that that's pressure or that's stress. Well, look, we're trying to accomplish great things in our business. And sometimes that's going to be a little difficult. Sometimes that's maybe going to be a little bit uncomfortable, right? I've worked long hours in the past. I have made sacrifices to get to where I am in my business. I always look at it as short-term pain for long-term gain because I'm trying to accomplish something greater. So having that accountability of making yourself give a report every month helps people to get things done. Now, if you don't have a mastermind group that you can be a part of, why can't you find an accountability partner? Chances are there's somebody else within the voiceover industry that you have a relationship with that the two of you could commit to meeting with each other once or twice a month, even if it was only for half an hour. Sharing what your goals are, sharing your progress, making sure that you're holding each other accountable. And by the way, true accountability means sometimes putting boot to butt. If you keep showing up and telling me that you're not accomplishing your goals consistently, week over week, month over month, I'm not going to pat you on the bum and say, good job. I'm going to say, what is going on? How do we fix this? What can we change that's going to make you do the thing that you're supposed to do? Because good accountability sometimes puts boot to butt. So if you are going to be somebody's accountability partner, part of that arrangement on both sides is going to be a willingness and an acceptance to genuinely holding each other accountable. It doesn't mean you got to drop the hammer on them, but it does mean that sometimes you may have to call each other out if you're not doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. So maybe you're going to have an accountability partner. Maybe you're going to create an accountability group. Maybe you're going to use something like a planner, the Clever Fox Planner, and that's how you're going to hold yourself accountable. You know, one of the things that I did, I've talked about this in the past. I've done podcast episodes on this in the past. Once upon a time, I had a really messed up victim type mindset where I could always see the worst in every situation. And I defaulted to finding the worst in every situation. And I thought the world was against me and everything was always going to be a fail. I just had a really crappy attitude. And one of the ways that I decided that I was going to change that was by focusing on gratitude for an entire year. And so my accountability in that instance was I wrote a blog, a public-facing blog, 365 days, I wrote that blog called One Good Thing. And that was my accountability. Because over the span of the year, I built a readership for that blog. And if I didn't get a new post put up every day, I knew people were going to come after me. And I don't mean come after me like come and get me. I mean, they were going to write me and be like, why didn't you write One Good Thing today? What happened? Why did you fall off the bandwagon today? People were going to hold me accountable because people came to expect it. And so that was one of the ways that I created accountability. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this for yourself, but I can tell you right now that of everything else that you can factor in for goal setting 
and goal achieving, accountability is one of the most important factors. There needs to be some form of accountability. And some people have the ability to hold themselves accountable. Other people need somebody else to hold them accountable. So figure out which one you are and then get a system in place that is going to help you to do that. So let's recap these five things that I want you to take into consideration for setting goals for 2022. I want you to have an amazing year. First up, what is one area of your business that frustrates you? It's probably not going to take you too long to figure out what that is. Set a goal around it. Overcome it. Put it behind you. Not only is it going to feel great to have that thing out of the way, it's also going to make you more productive because you're not going to be procrastinating or avoiding in that particular area, but it also gives you a really good win. A really good win that is going to give you momentum, that is going to carry forward for the rest of the year and all of the other goals that you're trying to accomplish. The statement, it's December 31st, 2022, and you're reflecting back on your year. What's one thing that you accomplished that made you feel like a success? You know what that thing is. Be real with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Don't be afraid. Be bold. Be brave. Be courageous. Write that thing down and set a goal around it. Write down everything that you think that you want to accomplish in 2022 and then force yourself to rank them numerically. One, two, three, four, five, etc. Because that's how you're going to figure out what your priorities are. And when you know what your priorities are, it's so much easier to figure out not only how to invest your time, but also how to invest your dollars. Making sure that you're spending money in the right areas and making sure that you're devoting time in the right areas. A goal without a deadline is a wish. Every single goal that you set for yourself needs to have some kind of deadline. Whether it's, I'm going to get this done by the end of the day, or I'm going to get this done by the end of the quarter, or I'm going to get this done by the end of the year. And by the way, all of your goals should not have a by the end of 2022 deadline on them. A goal without a deadline is a wish. Set deadlines. That builds accountability. And then find a way to create other forms of accountability, whether it's through a partner, through a group, through a journal, through writing a blog, through producing a podcast, whatever it is that you're going to do for yourself. Something that is going to make you do the thing that you need to do or do the things that you need to do on a consistent basis. If you can get these five things in play, I think you're going to have a really great year. I'm excited for you to have a really great year. This is one of the reasons why I love working with my mastermind group, because sometimes, you know what, the year doesn't go the way that we thought. Sometimes the year doesn't go the way that we planned. But I always know that when we get to December, each member is going to feel better about themselves and their business if for no other reason than they worked strategically and they worked with purpose. And even if every goal doesn't get crossed off the list, as long as some of those goals get crossed off the list and they have that sense of accomplishment and they sense that they really did level up by the end of the year, man, there's no better feeling for me than that. So these are some of the things that I do with my mastermind. These are some of the things that I would encourage you to do with yourself to help you level up and have an amazing year in 2022. What are some of the goals that you're setting for yourself? What's the big goal that you're setting for yourself? Share it in your Instagram story. Tag me. Let me know that you were listening to the episode. I'll write it down. Maybe I'll check in with you every once in a while and try to hold you accountable to it. You know, I said we got to find ways to create accountability. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you've been inspired by this episode. And I want you to know that I truly am in your corner. And I am wishing you a successful and prosperous 2022. Thanks so much for listening. I'll catch you on the next one. The Everyday Vopreneur Podcast. Available everywhere fine podcasts are given away for free. Mostly, we think. Having your voiceover demos easily playable and downloadable on your website is essential. The Voice Sam Player lets you do that across any device and browser. There are also options for adding play buttons in your email signature, tracking your listens, and even putting videos in your demo player. Sign up now at voicezam.com slash Mark Scott and receive an instant $25 credit. For full details and to claim this offer, visit voicezam.com slash Mark Scott. And see. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging out. Want more Vopreneur goodness? Jump online at vopreneur.com.